Well, good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Regen Med Hub. Um, as uh, Bernie was saying, we're creating something very special here in Winston-Salem around a whole economic and scientific cluster uh, to drive regenerative medicine. I'm happy to be able to share that with you as we start uh, this morning. I want to thank Bernie um, Siegel and, and Joan Shank for bringing the World Stem Cells uh, Summit back to Winston-Salem. Um, and convening the Regen Med Essentials course for the 10th year here in, in Winston-Salem. Uh, and I appreciate and will inter be introducing our uh, speakers uh, that, that will be joining me in, in just a moment. I want to, uh, to start off with by, by, by sort of presenting what the, the Regen Med hub is beginning to look like in Winston-Salem. You know, in 2004, Dr. Anthony Attala brought his research team uh, in regenerative medicine from, from Harvard to Winston-Salem University. Uh, 20 people came. Uh, today, in the facility in the, the Dean Medical uh, Building, uh, we now have, uh, as, as Bernie was saying, over 450 uh, researchers, support staff, companies that are now a part of the Regen Med hub from 20 to 450. Today, more than just a research lab, more than an academic enterprise, though it is an academic enterprise, we are now an academic business, governmental, global ecosystem that's creating the next generation of patient care with regenerative medicine and has become an economic driver for regenerative medicine and for the region and for the state, the nation, and for the global biomedical community. The Regen Med Hub really has four sort of core parts to it. One is the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. The Regen Med Development Organization, or what we refer to as RIMDU, and you'll hear that, that acronym. You know, we all have our acronyms in this business. The Innovation Quarter, and you'll get to hear from a representative of Innovation Quarter about the, the community that we're in today with this building and the entire build out of biomedical and other tech, related technological advances in the, in the community. And then the regional development that includes the community of Winston-Salem, the Piedmont Triad region that is, is centered for regenerative medicine in Winston-Salem, and ultimately for the state of North Carolina, which we are part of the larger biotech community of, of North Carolina uh, development. And each of these core components then have functions that they have brought to the development of this whole ecosystem. You know, in, with WFIRM, we have research. In 2004, WFIRM was a research entity that was brought to the community. It's now, with the evolution of almost 20 years, it's now a research uh, institution, a research entity, but it's also a clinical translation uh, facility uh, and, and, and entity. And as we move ahead, it's a driver for scaled manufacturing in our area. It brings expertise in those sciences and, and, and those technologies. It brings expertise in regulatory affairs. It brings the global partnerships that are represented by many of you here today. Uh, and it, it is the academic resource for regenerative medicine with the advocate atrium health system, which is the lar fifth largest health system in the United States. RIMDU brings the nexus that will connect the, uh, the business community with that academic uh, environment. And we'll talk about some of the component parts that make that nexus possible. The region, sorry, let me back up. The uh, regional development uh, organization. 
that, that are here with us today, and you'll be hearing from some of those, is not only regenerative medicine in our area becoming a scientific and a technological uh, uh, entity, but it's an economic driver from our area. And the innovation quarter contributes also facilities, marketing, other business support and business development uh, activities. The Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine uh, is a global leader in regenerative medicine. Uh, we've successfully engineered uh, component parts of out and have in, uh, in clinical trials 15 applications. Actually, 16 now I've learned since this slide was put together. 16. The, uh, and it is the intellectual center for the work that, that we are doing. It is the intellectual capital, if you will. It creates the intellectual capital, which drives the Regen Med hub. These capabilities, on the right you see the scientific and technical capabilities coming out of W Firm. On the left you will see the support and programmatic pieces of, the, of, of W Firm, driving discovery and driving clinical translation. We have 441, we survey this among our, our participants in W Firm each year, we have 441 academic and clinical collaborations uh, in the U.S. alone. I won't read them all to you, but you're aware of many of them, and it represents the, the key partnerships that are so important to us going forward. But we're also an international leader with 60 international academic and clinical collaborations, and this is growing uh, constantly. So a global leader, a national and global leader in regenerative medicine. The Regen Med Development Organization, or RIMDU, is really the nexus of, uh, ac um, of the academy and industrial development of regenerative medicine products, going from research to clinical translation to scaled biomanufacturing, again, bringing next generation diagnostics and therapeutics to practice and to the global market. And we do that in three ways. We have a research portfolio within RIMDU that is a uh, government, private sector, and academic uh, partnership to address the issues and the challenges that exist for scaled biomanufacturing and uh, addressing those challenges through research uh, programs that are centered right here in Winston-Salem. We have consortia and society. The Regen Manufacturing Innovation uh, Consortium, which is an industry-driven uh, entity that is driving the development of scale biomanufacturing and regenerative medicine, industry-driven consortium uh, that is centered here and led from here. The Humanoid Sensor Consortium, our newest uh, consortia, which is, bring, is, is bringing the intersection of AI and machine learning and the research, the, the biologic and related re technology research that goes on around body of chip technology, bringing those two entities together for the predictive capability and the future. And then the Regenerative Medicine Manufacturing uh, Society. The regenerator is the key component that's driving the economic development of uh, regenerative medicine centered around uh, Winston-Salem, including the, sorry. Uh, the regenerator is the four components that's driving the development. Test bed where companies are bringing their technology in to our, our test bed right here in Winston-Salem. Uh, and those international, um, multinational companies in many respects are making that available to uh, the startup companies and early growth companies in order to de-risk and accelerate the development of regenerative medicine products and the growth of companies uh, in the ecosystem. The innovation accelerator where we have brought 
uh, uh, 12 companies to the Regen Med Hub in the last 20 months of existence. Those companies were not in the region. They've now come to focus their development in the regenerative medicine space. Workforce development, the key to any development uh, is the, the skilled technical people that uh, are required. And the Regen Med Hub is, is providing those through our partnership, not only of Wake Forest University, but of the other entities in our, our area, our community college, our baccalaureate and other graduate producing uh, academic institutions, our engineering programs that it, Wake Forest has in collaboration with other institutions, uh, and North Carolina A&T, for example, has in, in biomedical engineering in our region. Bringing together all the partners that we have together to, to develop an educational ecosystem that feeds into the opportunities that exist for companies in our area. And then finally, the Clinical Trials Catalyst, which is our newest initiative within RIMDU to support companies who have product that they're taking through the regulatory process. We've added the Chief uh, Regulatory Affairs Officer for W Firm, Steve Bauer, who you will, will meet. Um, Steve comes from 31 years with FDA in biomedical uh, research. He's now a part of the Regen Med Hub with W Firm and, and Remdu. So we're now providing the kind of support that companies tell us they need to take their products to market and help through that regulatory process through our Clinical Trials Catalyst initiative within the Regenerator uh, umbrella within Remdu. All of this is making connections, providing space providing opportunities with the Innovation Accelerator, bringing companies here, launching companies here, the test bed that brings the, uh, the technology which will support companies, uh, early stage companies and startup companies as they grow and, and, and ha by having access to the latest technology, collaborative research, taking the intellectual capital within W Firm, combining it with company needs, and company development, and then the clinical trials catalyst to, to get through the regulatory uh, environment. All of this is about the development of a hub of companies, a hub of, of agencies, a hub of academic institutions, uh, all coming together for the development of regenerative medicine here in, in the Piedmont uh, Triad and particularly here in Winston-Salem. At this time, I want to introduce some of these partners to get you a, give you a flavor of the breadth of this activity here in, in Winston-Salem. Uh, in the IQ uh, Innovation Quarter that you're sitting in, in the city of Winston-Salem that you are visiting or that you're are working in, and then in the state of North Carolina, which is a global leader as a national leader and a global leader in bioscience, uh, including regenerative medicine related fields. I'm gonna first introduce uh, Isaac Perry. And Isaac is the head of biotech and life sciences for Innovation Quarter and the Greater Winston-Salem Inc. Oh, sorry. Okay. Laura Lee is the Senior Vice President for Economic Development uh, for Greater Winston-Salem, Inc. And Nancy Johnson comes to us as the Executive Director of the Piedmont Triad Region for the North Carolina Biotechnology Center. So I'll invite each of my colleagues to come and present their part of the Regen Med Hub. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Green. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Isaac Perry. I'm the head of biotech and life science ecosystem development with Innovation Quarter. Uh, I work closely with my colleagues here on this stage and then many other partners who are not on this stage to help way identify ways to help researchers and companies thrive in our community. Uh, today, I'd like to share a little bit about our history, uh, some about innovation districts as a whole and the ways our supports regenerative medicine. Our origin story began around 20 years ago uh, as leaders from Winston-Salem came together to help 
try and reimagine the future of our city as tobacco and manufacturing uh, began to exit the region. The opportunity was assessed and the leaders understood that there's a great opportunity to expand on the research happening at Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center through the creation of a new research park. Land was amassed by the medical center and a major expansion was announced in the early 2000s. <clears throat> this expansion was expedited by the generous gifts of the R.J. Reynolds family who actually donated their old tobacco manufacturing sites for the cause. The building we're standing in today, Wake Forest Biotech Place, was the first site to be redeveloped back in 2012. I still think it's amazing to think 100 years ago, this building was full of Turkish tobacco for camel cigarettes, and today it is home to some of the leading research and medical, uh, medical and um, academic research programs in the entire country. As additional sites were developed in Winston-Salem, the heart of our city began to be known as Innovation Quarter. Today, we are known as one of the leading innovation districts in the world due to our real estate development, our supportive ecosystem, and the R&D strengths within. <clears throat> innovation districts are founded under the idea that proximity breeds collaboration. Collaboration can give rise to industry hubs with magnetic appeal, explosive growth potential, and the opportunity to really change the world. The most mature hub in our innovation district, as you might imagine, is Regen Med Hub, and it absolutely will change the world. Innovation Quarter is a mixed-use development full of residential, retail, and professional office and laboratory space. Again, you can see it is a dense collection of individuals. With regards to the physical infrastructure, there are buildings that can um, support regenerative medicine businesses of all shapes and sizes, from the nascent startup who might benefit from an incubator program with shared lab space or shared lab equipment, all the way to the growing smaller company that might need an independent footprint in a lab or a small admin office, all the way to the growth stage company that may need an entire floor or building built to spec. And now interwoven through all of this physical infrastructure is a supportive ecosystem full of those same visionaries who first imagined Innovation Quarter over 20 years ago. The real estate investors, the elected officials, the entrepreneurs and the business mentors of all backgrounds all coming together with the purpose to help each other grow. And speaking of growth, the next phase of Innovation Quarter will be will begin uh, by the end of this year with a 30-acre horizontal infrastructure build-out that will further support vertical development of more mixed-use space consisting of housing, retail, and of course, more lab and business offices to support the rapid and explosive growth of Regen Med Hub. People are coming in troves to this city, and it's not just because of the amazing architecture, or the vibrant, buzzing downtown full of artists and academics and foodies. But people are coming here to be around like-minded visionaries, around innovative companies and researchers who are working together to grow and help change the world. I think I'm about at my time, uh, but again, uh, my name is Isaac Perry. I'm very humbled and honored to have the opportunity to speak with you today and share a little bit more about Innovation Quarter. Uh, I hope you enjoy today's programming, and welcome to Innovation Quarter. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Isaac, for setting us up so well to talk about um, economic development more broadly in our community, Winston-Salem, and for Scythe County. I am Laura Lee, and I serve as Senior Vice President for Greater Winston-Salem, Inc., within economic development specifically. So our organization sat down in 2020 to talk about 2030 goals. Who do we want to be as a community and then as an organization? How can we help? raise our community up in the next 10 years. So our 2030 goals that we're working toward day in and day out are to be the top mid-sized city in the southeast for economic growth, to be a more equitable community, and we, we mean that in every sense of that word, and then to be the best place to raise a family. 
We know it's important to dig your roots deep and in a community that you decided to live and work and play in. So the Raise a Family felt really like it resonated well with us. What are we doing in our community? What's happening in Winston-Salem? I wanted to share a little bit about recent activity that we've had from an economic development perspective. Since 2020, we've announced almost 1,600 new jobs coming into our community and an associated $499 million. We're being very honest here. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't go to up to $500 million. <laughs> but um, so that's new capital investment associated with those projects since 2020. Um, a lot of really exciting work, and that spans many industries, but life science is a, a big part of that as well. We also have a, a small... Um, seed fund that I'll share more about at the end of this presentation that has invested $1.8 million in just over um, 18 months that it's been in existence, and they've, they've supported nine companies that are Winston-based. And then as far as, as Isaac was sharing about the space and potential for growth, we've also worked with our city-county planning partners to identify new industrial sites and other opportunities for growth for companies in our market. So our community garners a lot of accolades. We're very proud to, to share that we're a top affordable metro in the United States. That means a lot more when we see inflation rates um, growing and, and being able to have higher buying power is really important. And so we do feel like Winston-Salem has an incredible value proposition to share from that standpoint. Um, we're also ranked by Southern Living last year among the top 20 South's best college towns, which we were really thrilled about. That's, that's a huge asset of ours, as Dr. Green was mentioning, um, having the variety of colleges and universities, six within our community alone. And then North Carolina has been ranked several years in a row as the best state for doing business. Last year, CNBC ranked us as top, and we've, we've been in similar rankings with other um, publications as well. Um, we really do think that the cost of living is something that helps draw people here, but also allows people to live well when they're here. So if you look at some of the other competing metros we, we work with, um, Winston-Salem really ranks well there. And then when you're here, we like to say that you know, the 216 days of sunshine are really exciting. We're experiencing a sort of cloudy-ish when it looks so far today. But then we have 3,500 acres of parks and recreation to enjoy those days in. And short commute times, which is more and more valuable to people as, as we come out of the pandemic, people really wanting to be able to live their lives more fully and not spend that time commuting. And then we have, specific, we have over 100 community events that are hosted every year. Um, so we're a very active and engaged community as well. Um, and Isaac gave a really great overview of what we've done from an innovation quarter perspective. But to give you a, a broader lens as well, our community has been really focused on investing in itself um, really since 2000. But we've made $2 billion of investment in our downtown alone since 2013, so just 10 years, um, and have had a variety of projects that some of these are, are displayed on the, the slide here um, that focus on infrastructure, but then also amenities that for children, like children's museums, and then other mixed-use developments that we're excited about being able to, to share with our community. And then who are we as a community? Where, where do we stack up from a demographic perspective? What does this look like when companies are trying to decide, can they find labor? And do they feel like this, this is a place that fits for them? So our community statistical area, which includes Greensboro, our neighbors to the east, is 1.7 million people. And out of that 1.7 million, we have over 800,000 people that are in our workforce population, which is truly tremendous for communities that are that are our size that are easy to access and easy to move move between we also have relatively high um, median and average household incomes throughout the state of North Carolina that's my comparison point here so 52,000 for median household income and 72 for the average household income and then I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into who we are from a from a regenerative medicine, but also a, a broader life science perspective. What we see from industry and then what that means from um, where we train people, where we have um, opportunities for education as well. So currently we have 76,000 people that are employed in healthcare and life sciences regionally. And Nancy, I'm sure, will share more about this shortly. And then we have 70, over 70 bioscience companies in our region. So some of those are are outlined here, um, and we are incredibly proud of the ones that we have that are headquartered in our market and are just really excited about the potential for growth. And then life science talent in particular, this is where we think we really do have our special sauce in Winston-Salem. So we have a, 
a true strength in talent concentration with clinical lab technicians. I think a lot of that is due to W Firm and the amazing concentration of 450 <laughs> workers there, um, but but also other other employers with large lab lab needs. And then we do, as I mentioned before, our, our cost of living, but cost of doing business is also a little bit more affordable than our neighbors in Charlotte and in Raleigh and Durham area. So that can be a, a real benefit for us. And then location quotient, not to get too technical this morning, but we've seen that we have a healthcare and life science talent concentration um, above the national average. So one is sort of the national average. So 1.2 is actually really concentrated in that market. So we were really pleased to see we have clinicians that add up to the healthcare talent, obviously, but also the life science is a bit more broad. And we are really pleased to have all of that breadth and depth of, of talent in our market. And you'll see there are several um, things that we've been working on in, in the news over the past couple, couple years that have really added to additional talent opportunities here. So I was alluding to it earlier, but higher education is something that we really see as, as a great pipeline for us to move forward within regenerative medicine and, and help our community grow. So we have six local institutions that are all listed on the bottom here and really do serve a variety of students and a variety of interests, but that, that trans, translates to around 23 to 23,000 degrees that are awarded annually in our region and, and then 100,000 regional college students among 18 colleges and universities, which is just an exciting pipeline. Um, and then we always like to boast on accolades. So um, Winston-Salem State University, which is just a mile and a half down the road, is the top public HBCU in the United States of America. Um, exactly. We may have some alums. <laughs> and then... Um, UNCSA is ranked among the top 10 film schools. I think there are times when they're, they're above number 10, but we're really pleased to have them as well. They, they are able to be sort of multifunctional in how they can support medicine and regenerative medicine. And then the top, the second best college in North Carolina is ranked as Wake Forest University, and we're among the, that, those buildings at this moment. So really pleased to have those in our community. And then really quickly to showcase what programs we have that really from, from those organizations to drill down a bit further. We have 2,800 annual graduates in healthcare, and then several in 3,300 in biological sciences. And then, as I alluded to earlier, we do have a small um, seed fund that we've been working with from a, a, an investment capital standpoint. And and it's been a tremendous asset for us to see for early stage companies. So we have 80 members, this is a pledge fund, so 80 members of the, the Winston-Salem community that have decided they want to support Winston-Salem startups and companies that are based in our community on how they grow. And we've had over a million dollars invested in, in the first year alone, which we're really excited about and hope that, that we'll have the second year will look the same way. We do have priority industries, and a couple of the investments have already been in healthcare, including one that's not listed here, which is Karenetics, which I think was on a, a previous slide. Um, but we have a really great opportunity here. If, if there's any interest, please, please do let me know, and we're happy to continue the conversation about how we can support you in Winston-Salem. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome to North Carolina, to the Piedmont Triad region, and more importantly, meeting the Winston-Salem community. So thank you very much to the World Stem Cell Summit for investing time and energy here. I'm very, very excited to share with you today a little bit about North Carolina as a global life sciences leader and just try to tie in some of the great data that you've just heard about what this community contributes to the life sciences and the leadership around regenerative medicine. Um, we were very happy to not only partner with the World Stem Cell Summit, and thank you Dr. Green for the inclusion on this panel, but also in helping to provide a meeting grant for the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine uh, Essentials course that's occurring this week. So I'm very glad to, to see everyone. I will be brief. 
but I will tell you it's important for you to know that North Carolina as a global life sciences leader celebrates the life sciences as an, as an 88 billion dollar industry for the state and how that translates is we're looking at about 810 companies that we're defining as companies that are manipulating at a molecular level to render a new commercializable um, device or therapeutic. We have 75,000 individuals in North Carolina working in this space. I'll talk to you briefly at the end what that looks like in this region. And we were talking about talent and workforce and how incredibly important that is. And I think that's being demonstrated this week with a lot of the focus there. But just alone within a year, we have the ability with our universities and our colleges to produce over 5,000 in bio, biological, biomedical type um, programming. As far as engineering, you're looking at a similar number. So when we talk about life sciences leadership in North Carolina, what are we trying to uh, capture? This just is an example of some of the larger industry that you're going to find in the state. And I will say in the triad region, you're gonna see the likes of LabCorp, uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific, and right here in Winston-Salem, Cook Medical, which, which is a huge uh, community leader here. Our core strengths in North Carolina lend themselves to uh, gene and cell therapy, along with regenerative medicine, and the work that you've heard about earlier in the presentation, and what you'll hear this week demonstrates that that strength in the hub of regenerative medicine is coming right out of this community. The Biotech Center is a private nonprofit that's been funded by the state for, we're about to celebrate 40 years. Outside of Research Triangle Park, we've made an investment across the state. My office is one of those uh, serving the Piedmont Triad region. When you think about economic development, when you think about R&D and the translation of regenerative medicine, we work along that continuum. So we may provide grants, loans, or introductions to investors. We look to make connections with resources, and we also work with our colleagues here to help recruit to this particular sector. Statewide life sciences, I would encourage you to go to our website at ncbiotech.org. You will find a company directory that you can sort according to the region. I think you will find that the Winston-Salem community within the Piedmont Triad region has a very strong uh, value proposition for research and development, commercialization, and opportunities. So very briefly, I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. Uh, my name is Nancy Johnston. I serve as the executive director in the Piedmont Triad region, which is the center of the state of North Carolina. And in our community, specifically, we're looking at 72 bioscience companies, that varies, and 7,800 jobs, that varies as well. Part of the ecosystem is surrounded by support companies, which 230 is our number now. But nonetheless, we have this incredible ecosystem. You've seen it demonstrated by the previous presenters. And we will have a, a table here during the conference so that if you want to learn a little bit more about North Carolina, how Winston-Salem and the Piedmont Triad contribute to that, and what you can do to get involved, I'd be delighted to talk with you on that. So thank you for the opportunity.